Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Nick Girls. This is episode 58. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Les. I'm Laura, also known as Lola. And we are way more chipper today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so welcome it's to the episode. amazing what sleep does to you. I got up at like 7, let the dog out, came back, and I was like, oh, just lay down for another hour. Woke up at 11 o'clock. That is awesome. I have like a bunch of text messages from people saying Happy Mother's Day, but not one from Mr. Awesome yet. So no, not one from me either. No, you're not my mother. <laughs> I, I gave not. my mother her present. <laughs> um, but Mr. Awesome is doing a the, every year that he does a man trip uh, to the mountains, and they do rafting and whatever. They have fun. So whatever, they're having fun. Um, all right, works in progress. I'm Your working name. on my trail jacket. Go ahead. It's out of ecological wool. And it has grown quite a bit since y'all saw it. It now has sleeves. It don't have sleeves. Yep. And it's around nine inches from the sleeves to the bottom. So I only have like ten more inches to go. And I only have this much left of the first ball. So that makes me feel a lot better. It's getting there. What yarn are you using? Ecological wool. Oh, did you already say that? I'm sorry. I did. That's okay. I can't hear out of the ear today. <laughs> <'Cause I'm laughs> <outside of> <laughs> <laughs> so, I was kidding with her earlier, and I was like, I'm just gonna scream. <laughs> Other people might like not like that. Yeah, it's on a size ten and a half needles, six point five millimeters. <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the All other right. thing that I have is for the night socks, which are on size Those one needles and two point five, and I have them to the a little bit past the afterthought heel. They're very pretty. Thank you. And this is a new dyer to us, This right? is a new dyer to us. It is Canon Hand Dyes by Amy, the Amy Lee Show. And I like her stuff because, first off, I think this is funny. It's all on, like, cardstock. Like, it almost looks, I don't know if y'all can see the inside. Maybe a little bit. But it's that, like, scrapbooking paper mm -hmm. on the inside. So that's kind of fun. And everything's named after quotes. So this one is, The bright day is done and we are for the night, which is a quote from Anthony and Cleopatra. Self-striping, this is her Arthur base, which is a BFL nylon blend, 395 yards. This is how much I have left, so I have a good bit left. And it's pretty, and it's working up really nice. I'm thinking I'm liking BFL blends a little bit more. I, I'm interested in seeing how these are going to wear. Because BFL, Blue Face Luster, is a longer staple wool than merino. It's also a little bit, it's not as soft as merino. So I'm thinking for socks, it might actually wear better. Yeah, that's possible. So I'm, I'm interested in seeing how that's gonna work out. So those of you who have knit BFL ones before. For socks, I'd be interested. Yeah, you have to let us know how they wear. I think I've knit BFL one. I think my Twisted Lamoon, the first skein that I knit up was a BFL one. I'll have to go back in my notes yeah, and I see. Yeah, I think a lot of hers are, aren't they? Yeah, she does use a BFL blend. And this is another of the dyers that you can't get anymore because it sells out super quick. Who? Oh, it's with Yeah. I was like, not the Amy Lee show because we yet. haven't talked <laughs> about her yet. So she had plenty of stuff in her shop when I looked last week. I had, didn't look right before we recorded, but she had a whole bunch of self striping in like a cashmere merino base. Ooh, that's pretty. So I thought that would be nice. I'm all about I was the good and versus. resisted. So is that all of the... That's all I've worked on this week. I've been super busy this week. It was spirit week. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to figure out my costumes for every day. So the week before we do our state testing, we try to get the kids all hyped up. And so we do special things. Like Monday was... Uh, Rock the MCT2. So I got dressed up in like my starving musician hat and a black t-shirt and jeans and... Um, Converse shoes and went as like a rock star. Dave Girl. All yeah, like all the rings. <laughs> I was blinged out beyond reason. And then Tuesday was team day, so I wore my Steelers jersey. And I'm a team. Like each teaching unit is considered a team, and they all have team names. And there are no Steelers. So they were giving me grief over that, and I'm like, I'm a team of one! And then <laughs> one of my library helpers came in in his heat outfit because he was on the heat team, and I made him wear my terrible towels a cape for the rest of the day, <laughs> so then we were a team of two. <laughs> the eighth graders just appease me. <laughs> I was going to say, you can rope these kids into anything. Yep. And then Wednesday was spirit day. It was, um, you know, more like middle school, geared up day. 
It was also, I got to MC the um, pep, pep rally, rally, so that was lots of fun. Thursday was cowboy day. I was like rope the MCT too, so I wore my cowboy hat and jeans and boots and a uh, button down shirt all day. And then Friday was dress to impress day. And I wore a bridesmaid's dress <laughs> with a little shrug. My um, leaf fascinator that I knit, especially for that occasion, <laughs> and uh, was wore stripy knee socks underneath the dress and Converse's, and the kids just got the biggest kick out of that. It was also, which is the same thing she wore to the reception at the wedding that she wore the <laughs> dress at, um, except for the truck yeah. and the fascinator. But I had to cover up the. Ta I have a tattoo in the middle of the back of my back, so I had to cover that up for school. So, hence the shrug. And, um, what else was I going to say about that? Oh, Thursday night, super busy. I had uh, awards night for my 8th graders, which is so sweet all the time because you see the older kids and then the younger kids coming up and then with the third of siblings. And it's kind of sad at the same time. And then Friday was uh, awards for 7th and 6th grade. So, the parents all thought I was crazy, but that's nothing. <laughs> Actually, one Whatever. of the parents who's known me for a while and I taught her older... Um, daughter took a picture for her older daughter of my shoes and my stripy socks because she was like, "Oh, my daughter will love to see you, and she, she'll love that outfit." So it was. I had a really good week. It was super busy because I had a CEU thrown in there too, but it was a really good week. It was a fun week. That's good. But costuming takes time. It does. <laughs> Valuable knitting time. Um, so works in progress for me. I have two this week. Um, one is my Knit Girls African Square Swap. Uh, and I am knitting a square out of the XRX Great North American Afghan book. And this is a square I'm knitting. It's called, oh, it doesn't have a name. It's Deborah Newton was the person that designed it. It's this one here. So it's got some cables and some knit pearl texture. And I won't say who I'm knitting it for because it's supposed to be secret until they get it. But it's out of Debbie Bliss Cash Cashmerino Erin. And this is what it looks It's kind of dark because she, um, this was a color that she specified she wanted. So, gosh, it is probably way too dark for y'all to even see. But anyway, there's cables, there's texture. It's a navy blue, of yeah, course. It's a navy dark. blue. So, um, I'm about halfway through it. I've got about six inches into it, so I've got about, and I started it last night, so I've got about half to go, and I'll probably try to get that finished tonight or tomorrow so I can get it out in the mail and not miss the uh, mailing deadline, because it would be bad if one of the mods missed the deadline. <laughs> I haven't even started mine yet, but I'm going to start it as soon as I finish something else. I'm trying to keep the things off the needles. I'm rubbing it's crazy. off on her. Well, no, because I cast on, <laughs> I'm going to do an owl for the Harry Potter group, and to do the owl, I'm doing one where you basically knit four pairs of socks, so I had to do swatches for all those four yeah. pairs of socks, so I just cast them on and knit, um, and that's what they ask you to do, is cast on, knit the cuff, knit a little bit of the pattern. So now I have, like, four pairs of socks <laughs> on needles in addition to the other socks on the needles. And it's starting to stress me out a little bit. Like, i got a lot of stuff on needles right now. Yeah, you do. So I need to get some stuff off the needles. By the way, you do have an FO. Oh, but I don't have it. Damn it, it's downstairs. We can always stop no, right here. No, I'll show it because it doesn't have buttons on it yet anyway, so I'll show it next You'll week. You'll show it next week when it's really, really finished. God, you're right. I did. I finished that baby sweater that I showed y'all last week, but I forgot. It's downstairs. I'll get it for next week. So my other uh, work in progress is the Hitchhiker by Martina Bem. This is what's left of the yarn ball, and I'm getting ready to bind off. I've got about a row and a half left and then bind off. I didn't use it all, but um, I also went down needle sizes, so I didn't expect to use it all, and at this point, it just has got to, it's got to end. Um, <laughs> and it will be on the, I will have done 42 bumps. It's, I'm not in, the, I'm in kind of an awkward position, but it's upside down. Oh. So this is what it's going to look like with the little bumps here on the bottom, the little notches. There'll be 42 of them. Um, I just I haven't finished because I, I'm using this as a tutorial for something else. So we're very busy. Yeah, we have lots to do today. So that's my other work in progress. It'll be an FO by later today, and I'll show you all next week after it's been blocked. Um, I have no FOs to show you, 
baby sweaters downstairs. You have lots of FOs. I do. Well, first off, if you are in the Perfect Day Sock Club, you need to go away. Just for like two If you minutes. haven't gotten your package. If you haven't gotten your package and you don't want to be spoiled, how about that? So I designed a shawl for the Perfect Day Sock Club. And since most everyone's gotten their package, including Leslie, and we're going to talk about what's in the package, because Leslie has hers, later, this is the shawlette that the design is, the pattern is in the Perfect Day Sock Club, Dead Poet Society. It is called the Lost in Light Shawlette. It was knit on size fours, which is 3.5 millimeters. And I really like it. Leslie wore it to work one day, mm -hmm. and it's actually Leslie in the pictures. It's good to do this with. It also fits nicely. On the shoulders. On the shoulders. There's also instructions for making it bigger, smaller, if you want. And it's a bottom up pattern. Yep, and it's bottom up. Now, if you're not in the sock club, and you're like, oh, I really like that pattern, it will be available in October for purchase. And this is out of Bamboo Haiku. One of my favorite perfect day bases. In the Lost in Light colorway. I was very original with the name on this one. <laughs> I actually tried several different names, and that just kind of stuck for me. So there's that. I'm happy to be able to show y'all. It's been off the needles for quite a while. And then from last week, I finished the three use twisted in fiber saltwater taffy. Look how perfect those heels are. They don't match. The like I don't match. match. No, they don't. The heels match each other. Well, kind of, sort of. Look, I'm trying. I guess here. they do. But I don't care about matching. I know, so you're but it makes me happy. The wrong person. <laughs> So they don't match, and that was done on purpose. Grin. Um, love this yarn. Love this base. This is their just super wash merino nylon base. Great base. So talk about those Salt blockers. water taffy. These are the Bryson blockers, and I like them because they can hang. And we got you got those in Arkansas, right? I did. I got those at um, Elizabeth's shop in Arkansas. So. That's what, that yeah, I can't remember either. I either got them there or Hank of Yarn carried them too. I think he got them there. Because I, I think so too. Okay. There. So, great blockers. And I tend to wash my socks. I have that big tub that we did the soak episode in. And I wash my socks one at a time in there and then hang them on these to dry. I actually have a sweater dryer, so sometimes I lay them flat to dry. And that's what I actually do with these. I always I keep all my hand wash socks in one spot, or my hand knit socks. And then I put them in a lingerie bag and put them in my washer on delicate or hand wash. And then I just do an extra spin and just lay them out. Oh, okay. That's weird though, because like the first time I, I knit anything, as soon as I finish it, it always gets a personalized soak <laughs> in the sink by itself with soak wash. But after that, I'm like, meh. At least for socks. All right, you have more of those. I'm sorry. So these were done on size one, 2.25 circulars, after the thought heel using Leslie's lovely tutorial. Actually knit the heel while I was babysitting Kobe last Sunday, and that's it. Oh, and then see, this is why I put those clips down here. These are the clips that are on the back of my fascinator. They're pretty awesome. They're the goodie stay put clips, and so let me take it out of my hair. This is the little leaf fascinator I'm made to wear with my dress. It's got two different yarns: the large green yarn is Knit Picks Shine Worsted, and I think the grass colorway, and then the smaller leaf is the knit uh, Lunch with the Knit Girls by Numa Numa Yarns in her usual. usual base. The big leaf I knit on size fives, the small leaf I knit on size ones. You need two circulars really to knit these. They're double knit, which is kind of fun. And then you can see my horrible, this is how it's attached on the back. So I have that clip, and then I kind of wove in the ends, and then I just like tacked down the clip with the ends. So that's my little leaf fascinator. And it took all of maybe 20 yards total yeah. to knit, and an hour and a half. So it was very cute. The pattern that I used is just a leaf, and I just kind of went from there. I looked at the I was looking for a little leaf pattern, saw that one, thought, oh that one's cute, and went from there. Laura's fearless. Not so much fearless as 
have time on my hands sometimes to play. <laughs> I figured with, okay, that's so small that the worst that could happen is I have a horrifically ugly leaf. That took you 20 minutes. Yeah, that took 20 minutes to a half hour to knit. <clears throat> so is that all of your FO parade there? That is the FO parade of the day. Um, what's next? Spinning. Spinning. I show yours. Okay. So spinning. I was spindle spinning on the trindle last week. And I finished the little two-tone BFL fiber. Now this two-tone BFL fiber is available in Gail's Arts shop. In fact, at Maryland Sheep and Wool yesterday, Jessica, our good friend, show me your knits, and Jane, who goes by Jane B on Ravelry, both purchased four ounce um, little bumps of this. It's only eight dollars for four ounces, and I think it spins up beautifully. I think I'm going to have to get more. Mom and I were just discussing last night how I should get like a pound and spin up a sweater's worth. Yeah. Because I think it's really, really pretty. It'd be a very affordable sweater too. So this is, I'll untwist it. It's only 30 yards of a two ply. I plied it on Leslie's wheel yesterday when I was over here. And I love spinning on Leslie's wheel. I was like, oh, <laughs> this is a nice wheel. It's actually, it's not overspun anymore. Okay. It's hanging pretty nice. There we go. It's a little bit overspun, but I didn't think bad for my first spindle spun. Yeah, and it's pretty thin too. And it's decently thin. Next up on that spindle are going to be um, the little mini roving balls that Sadie Blue Rune yes. sent me. She sent me some too. Thank you, Sadie. I haven't had a chance to even show them. They're somewhere in this room. Like, this is the clean part. The rest <laughs> of this room is... Mr. Awesome still got a couple little things left to do in here. So all his tools and, and junk are still in here. And I'm ready for them to be out so I can have my room. <laughs> and then I got a mini trindle that came in the mail today. It is wee. It's only that long. Less than a pencil. That's well, a lie. It did not come in the mail today. Today is Sunday. Oh, I'm sorry. This week. It's a little bit bigger than a pen. There's the Libby pen that we use for notes in comparison. So a wee bit bigger than a pen. And it's made mainly for lightweight spinning. So, like lace weight, because it's so light, it's got, instead of a wood base, it's got the carbon fibers as a base, and then carbon fibers for the stems of the outlying balls. So this is from Trindle Man. This is from Trindle Man again. And we're going to do a Trindle review sometime soon. And so, what I'm spinning on it is just awesome. It is a buffalo silk blend. So this is like a luxury fiber that you only ever get an ounce or so of, right? Yep. I think I got two ounces of it, so I'm just spinning it very lightweight. I'll probably two-ply it, and I'm just enjoying playing with it. It's also a short fiber. The silk makes it a little bit longer, so you have to add a lot of twist to it to get it to stay put. But I like the trindle, and it fits nicely in like a small, small bag. The mini trindle does. This is a bag I got in a Wool Girl package, the Pirate Snoopy package. And his former job was to hold the Garmin. It was, and it's by Fried Okra, it says on the inside. So I'll have to look and see. Yeah, I don't know. It's very cute though. I think if you did patchwork, it would be lots of fun to make one of these. It's not flat bottom, so that's why it was holding the Garmin. And now it holds the mini trindle. Super cute. Okay, that's it for me for spinning. I have some BFL on the wheel, but the wheel's at my house, and I didn't bother to get the bobbin off. Yeah, so I started spinning something last night, um, just because I haven't really played with my wheel lately. And then I, about 10 minutes in, I got bored. Because was, I was up here, and um, my, my computer sits a little too high on my desk for it to really be workable as a TV just for my specific angle. Anyway, so I went downstairs and I haven't spun very much of it, but what I started, I got this at um, Kent Kip and it's Frap Just Fibers Tri-Color BFL in the Caravan colorway. And it's four ounces, so I split it and I'm just gonna do a two-ply. I was gonna try to do um, the long draw spinning, but this fiber doesn't lend itself very well to long draw spinning, so I'll have to try something else. So I just started spinning it, um, woolen spinning, that's what I meant, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm just spinning it worsted, inchworm style, the way I normally do. So, I, like I said, I've only got maybe 10 yards of a single on a bobbin, I'm not going to get it off. 
this is what I'm spinning now. And it's really nice to spin. And it's got a lot of natural color in it too. So, and I like that. So that's what I'm spinning. And this is only half of it. The other half is somewhere else. I'm looking around like I can see it, but I can't. It's under my desk, I think. Oh. It's a mess in here. Um, all right, so... That's it for spinning. We'll Moving do, on to book reviews. Yeah, we'll do book reviews. So there's two book reviews. One is knitting related and one is not. Um, so we, we talked with Shannon Oki at Cooperative Press, and she sent us a couple of books for review. One of them was Silk Road Socks by Hunter Hammerson. And this is leaving this house under cold dead hands. Yeah, this, I'm sorry. We're not giving this one away. We both really, really coveted. In fact, I was like, I, well, I need to get a second copy of this because yeah. it needs to come spend some time at my house, too. So Cooperative Press, um, if you haven't heard, is a business that's at least partially, if not fully owned by Shannon Oki. Um, and her goal is to get all of the kind of unknown crafters and designs out there and published in book form. Crochet, knit, everything. She's, you know, she's totally multi -craftable. So this was, I've never heard of Hunter Hammerson before, I'm not going to lie. Um, but this book is based on um, the quote-unquote Silk Road that the travel was done on um, in the Orient. It's basically her love of Oriental rugs, mm -hmm. along with the awesome awesome historical section about the history of the oriental rugs in that area. I'm actually looking for something about the author because I don't know if Hunter is a man or a woman. Um, I, I don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, anyway, so it gives you a little map of what was considered the Silk Road at the time. Uh, but aside from it, it does have a lot of information about the time and how the rugs were made and historical background, right? Uh, you know, and the different types of rugs and the Which dyes I find that were used, fascinating, and how they were woven mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and how even in some cases a rug that had three colors, the blue might be different in one section versus another because of how they do small batches. It's very informative on the history of it. It, it even shows you some of how the knots that they used to make the rugs. So it's really interesting. And then a part that I love, so she talks about how the book is laid out and it's a little bit different from a lot of sock books. First of all, they have a ton of information on how to size it, a sock for you and do it the right way because the right answer isn't always going up a needle size or going up uh, or going down a needle size. Or changing your yarn. It, it, because it, a yarn or a, a sock has to be a certain density or else it's just going to be too loose and fall off your foot or it's going to be too tight to even fit over, fit over your foot. So gauge is really important and the fit is really important. And I'm not going to tell you all all about it. If you want it, you should read the book. Because it's a lot of really, really good information. She also gives you really helpful information on exactly how to measure your heel with something as simple as a rubber band as a guide. It's really interesting. You should you should download a copy of this book. I think you can download it or you can purchase it through Cooperative Press. Yeah. So I'm going to just show you all a couple. And she does the symbol keys all in one place. So for the whole book, this is all the symbols that you'll need. And everything in this book is charted. There are no this is there true. are very few written directions for the socks. Yeah. It is a charted. The sock designs book. themselves are only charted. They're not written out line by line. Um. So what she does is for each sock, so let's just start with the first one. Um, I'm Gorday, Gorday's, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce these words, I'm terrible. So she shows you, it's got this one little line here, and it shows you what the gauge should be, it shows you um, how many stitches should be on the front and the back needle, this is all assuming that you're doing it on two circulars, and then it shows you how many to cast on. So at a glance it gives you all the pertinent information that you need in order to pick a yarn and a needle. And it's that way for every pattern in the book. I really like that. I do too. It's easy to find. It's it's kind of know. bullet pointed, and it makes it easier for you yes. to sift through. So what she does is she gives you a picture of the rug that's inspired the pattern, and then she gives you pattern. I'm trying to make this so that it doesn't glare. And for me, I can see the correlation in every single sock pattern and rug pattern. And I love that about it. It makes my little OCD heart happy. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you all just a couple that I really, really like. Oh, that won't show up well on the camera, so I'm going to skip that. 
So this I love there's a variety of yarn in here too. It's not just fingering weight. There's some spore weight, at least three spore weight patterns. There's a whole variety of different dyers. It's set at a glance in the back, and we'll show you that when we get to it. And this one is called Harris. So this is the rug that inspired it. And this is the pattern with the diamond triangular motifs in it. You can, I can completely see the correlation. Let's see, of course, another one that I really liked. This was one you really liked. I really like that one. This is Sarah. This is the rug. This is the pattern. It's very lacy and open. I'm going to make the light not clear. But it, it, you can see how the two are, are linked. Um, okay, I'm not going to show you all every one. So you stop me if there's a specific one that you want to show. Um, I, I like many, many of these. And I like almost all of them. I've got one that's, um, I'm, I actually was going to start yesterday, but then I was like, I don't feel like it's to, um, gauge swatching today. This one's really pretty. That but one's gorgeous. This one is called Nain. This is the rug. And this is the pattern. So it's got some sort of lacy, ribby detail on it. And the one that I loved is this one. Is that the one you're going to start? This is the one I'll, I'm going to knit. I just may not knit yet. Um, this is Sine. Sine? I'm sorry, I can't pronounce. This is the rug. You can see it's kind of got some little paisley looking detail on it. And then these are the socks. And this isn't the best picture of the socks. But it's a mirror and it's got ribbing on one side and on the other side it's got this detail that goes all the way down and twists around the sock. So let me see if I can get you a better picture of that one. Yeah, this one's a better picture. And she does have multiple pictures of each pattern in there. Just a side note, I think these patterns really look best in a solid or semi-solid. Mm -hmm. I would not do variegated with very many of these patterns Yeah, there's at all. one that would be probably okay in a variegated. This one. This was called Mood. And it's got sort of a... It goes from a smaller right. motif, or a larger motif to a smaller yeah. motif. So that one's kind of cool. And that was a unique sheep yarn. Gradients. Mm -hmm. Barrow Downs. So that the one that I that I like is one of the last ones in the book. And then at the end, she gives you, at a glance, every yarn that was used in the book, as well as where to purchase it, which I think is really helpful. I didn't even and know. And what patterns this it was used for. Until Laura pointed it out to me. <laughs> but and it's there's some big name ones that she used. Uh, Lorna's Laces, Blue Moon, Dreaming Color, Sanguine Griffin, but there's some smaller ones too. Sweet Georgia, Sweet Georgia. Briar Rose. Unique Sheep. Yeah, so I mean there's a lot of, it's a good mixture, I think. Three Irish Girls. Um, I love Three Irish and Girls. And it gives a little bit about Cooperative Press. Uh, and, and basically their goal, Cooperative Press's goal is whether it's only 500 people that want the book or 500,000 people that want the book, it's worthy of being published. So Cooperative Press is um, something that I, they just had a fundraiser and it was something that we supported and talked mm -hmm. about and talked about. But um, you should you should go over to Cooperative Press and see if there's they more books They have another that you new like. book that just came out. Shaping well, Shawls to Fit. Uh, or that's going to come out, but uh, What Would Madam Do oh, yeah. <laughs> That just came out. That's got knitting and crochet yeah. patterns and that's kind of interesting. But Shannonoki is doing a marvelous job mm -hmm. over there at publishing smaller name yeah. pattern writers. And it's just a fabulous thing and something we full heartedly support. Yeah. So, Silk Road Socks by Hunter Hammerson. I know that it is available as um, a, a published book as mm -hmm. well as a download. So, take a look and um, you can look through the patterns on Ravelry to see whether or not you really want it. But I, I fully recommend it. It's got some beautiful artistic socks in it. And I want to sock. I want to start the center socks <laughs> a lot. And I actually think I'm going to use my hazel mitts for that because it's a beautiful, beautiful combination. All right, I've talked right. enough. You have a book review. Zorga Mazoo. Penguin sent me one of their latest books, which is Zorga Mazoo. This was they sent it to the school. This is like the librarian side, <laughs> not the big girl side. And I was just blown away by the concept behind this because it reminds me so much of Roald Dahl and Dr. Seuss combined with like lemony snicket. So the main character is a girl and basically what's happened is these creatures called Zorgamazoos have disappeared and she's gonna help find them. But the whole thing rhymes. Oh really? It's written in verse and it's got some great text features. 
And I just think that it is so much fun. Now, sometimes the rhyming gets on my nerves, <laughs> but it also has some great vocabulary words. So, ready your metal and steady your heart. It's time for my story's mysterious start. We begin in a subway under the ground, where people and trains go rolling around. In hurrying haste and in scurrying mobs, wandering off to their ponderous jobs. Ponderous. That's awesome. a lot of really big words. Much of the time they would linger in vain. They would stand in the station awaiting the train. They would push in between their, the ticket machines, like fish huddled into a can of sardines. That's a lot of, um, like uh -huh. ten cent words, whatever you want. Oh, them. yeah. And they also have a lot of similes and metaphors and some, a lot of um, alliteration and stuff like that. Perfect. Like, I got this book, read the first chapter, downloaded the Kindle edition immediately so I could put it on my smart board and read it with my kids that day. So I was, I'm still not finished with it, but it also has some, like, very cool text features. The, I will tell you the Kindle edition loses a whole bunch of the pictures and stuff like that. It, they're still there, but when you have t text features like this, they took basically that as a picture and put it in, so there's some duplication. So I would highly recommend the book version. And it's very cool. It won the E.B. Um, it's an honoree for the E.B. White Read Aloud, which I had never heard of, or the Silver Birch Award. And uh, the Silver Birch Award I looked up, and it's a Canadian award. And I think the E.B. White Read Aloud is as well. Well, actually, it's the Association of Booksellers for Children. But the, it was a Canadian author, and just very, very cool. And I'm enjoying reading it a whole bunch. So if you have a child that's moved on past Dr. Seuss, but hasn't quite hit those young adult books yet, like third, fourth grade, I really, second even, oh, I really son. like this book. Yeah, that's why I brought it over to get to Kobe, <laughs> to loan to Kobe since I have the Kindle edition. But I thought this would be lots of fun, and it is lots of fun. So I thought I'd share that with y'all. And it is by Robert Paul Weston. I'll flash that up there again for y'all so you can see exactly what it is, and we'll link it in the show notes, of course. And by we, we mean Laura. Yep. Laura does the show notes. That's why they're so late all the time. Because <laughs> I'm chronically late. I would not, just as I know, I probably would not expect show notes ever to be up before Tuesday. Just because Monday afternoons, I well, I go to work Monday, and the show typically doesn't go up till after till I'm... Till evening yeah, sometime. Yeah, till after days. I'm done with... Playing on the computer. Yeah. Sunday nights, I'm in bed reading typically, or watching TV or something. So you just gave information to your stalkers. Yeah. So they want to find you. If you want to find me, I'll be in my room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get your telescopes out now. Um, all right. So we've also got the Perfect Day Yarns, the second installment of the Dead Poet Society Club. So if you looked away for the first part where I showed what was in it, you need to look away again now yeah. for at least the next five minutes. So I got a little information on it. And then I got a pattern with a picture of me on it. <laughs> so this is the Lost in Light pattern. That's the Laura pattern. And she sent some candy, which I can't eat. Ooh, I'll take that off your hands. Actually, that's my mom's favorite candy in the whole wide world. Okay, well, why don't you give it to Mama Lona for me? That'll be your mother's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, I love this. This is such a cute idea. This is by Jelby. Um, so Carrie. Carrie, yeah. And that's the necklace that I'm wearing with a little peacock on it. Uh, this is a stitch marker holder, which is super cute, and mine had a little sock on it. I don't oh, know what yours I think had. they all have socks. Okay. I haven't gotten mine yet because I got special dyed yarn because I already had the dyed yarn from the um, shawl. So this is a little felt ball, and it's got a little sock on it, which is super cute. But the idea behind it is that you can keep your stitch markers, this little thing opens. That would be perfect for begin stitch markers yeah. or any other stitch markers you And you can you keep have. your stitch markers in one place and hold them on here. So it's a really good idea. I need to actually put it into practice, but I haven't done it yet. And very cute. Okay. there's some little stitch markers that Sarah made and sent. She does this for each each round, um, each uh, not every package, but each three round, month yeah. round. So I have little. Well, you probably can't see them. Little red ones. They might all be red. I don't know. Cute. And then the yarn, which I haven't actually opened yet, so I'll open it live on the show. You know why I haven't <laughs> opened it? Because I've already worn the shawl that it was made out of. <laughs> Um, 
So what are you going to knit out of the yarn? Are you going to knit the shawl? I want the shawl, yeah. Different? I plan on knitting the shawl because I liked it as soon as you finished it. I wanted to knit it. And I you just, wore it to work that day. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I just want to try it. Ooh, I love the yellow. That's so pretty. So this is Lost in Light is the name of the colorway. And this was the Perfect Day Yarns. Um, I think this is it still Sarah Teasdale this round? Yep, okay. Sarah Teasdale's the poet for this round. Um, and this is the Bamboo Haiku face, and it's got and like almost actually, 500 yards. There's a copy of the yards. poem as well. I am not you or something. Yep, and there's the poem that inspired the shipment. I'll be honest, I don't really care for poetry. <laughs> um, there are some poets that I enjoy reading, but for the most part, I don't enjoy poetry. I just love Sarah, and I love her yarns, so I don't care what the theme is. I'll, I'll participate. Uh, let's see. What's next? Oh, Cloud Lover. You I'll, get to talk again. I know. Woohoo! So, I'm part of the Actually, Cloud Lover. Actually, your two things almost match each other. They do. I'm part of the Cloud Lover Fiber Club. I did it um, for three months at the beginning of the year, and then I renewed because I, I love it. I love her fiber. So, this was the April shipment, and it's called My Tie, and it's a Superwash BFL. And it's kind of screaming bright. I love it. I think that white is going to totally, yeah. if you do I'm it right, not, will pop out with the orange and be gorgeous. Yeah. I'm not crazy about it in the braid, but I also can envision what it's going to be when it's spun, and I know that I'll love it a lot once it's spun. Um, it may not get spun for a while because I have a lot of stuff, but um, yeah, this is the April Fiber Club. My tie is the name of the color right. And she just opened her, ship, uh, her next round, so if you want to join again or join for the first time. Yeah. Cloud Lover has opened her. I saw that on Ravelry last night. And she's one of the advertisers in our group, yep. so we love her. We, we love her because she's got awesome fiber as well. All right, and Laura has a super cool event that she wants to talk about. I'm so excited. And I'm actually this, gonna, at first I wasn't going to participate, but I'm like, I'm going to. I may not win, but I'll. I'm participate. so excited. It's well, you win by completing it. Yeah. So we are going to do a 5K stash dash. So when I was in high school and even a little bit in college I used to run like 4k's and 5k's a lot and so this just screams to me last year I did a 50 skein stash yep. down and this year I wanted to do something totally different so I was thinking about the 50 skein stash down I was like well I could up it to 60 because I succeeded last year and then I was like no we're going to do something totally different because I want y'all to be able to participate right. too and I think 50 skeins can be a little bit overwhelming to people so this is what we're going to do you are going to use up five kilometers worth of yarn Which is from a your stash. Over 5, 000, 5, so 5,468 yards. You can knit whatever you want. You can knit whatever weight you want. You can use up big bulky yarn or a little itty bitty yarn. It does not matter. Laura did a couple of um, calculations. If you were doing only socks, you'd be able to knit about 13 and a half pair. Yep. And that would get you your five, um, 5,000 meters. If you're doing sweaters and you're my size, like three. Three, four sweaters. Three sweaters. Yeah. So it's going to run from May 27th, which is the day I get out of school, <laughs> through August 15th, which is right after our kids come back. We wanted to extend the time a little bit. So that's 81 days. Plus, there's uh, other ways to participate instead of just knitting. If you want to spin, any yardage that you get by spinning, let's say you take four ounces and it turns into 300 yards, there's 300 yards knocked Gone. off. And if you knit with that, you double it and it becomes 600, 600 yards because you've made the yarn and you've knit with it. Yep, so we're totally trying to make this as user friendly as possible. If you want to crochet, awesome. If you want to weave, Yep, and that's, you fine. use a lot of yarn weaving too. Oh yeah, so. and quickly as well. After so you all we ask moves. is that you document it as you go, take photographs of whatever mm -hmm. that you use, and we'll we'll have a thread started soon that'll be called Stash Dash. 5K. And what we're gonna do is if you complete your 5K with the pictures and everything, we're gonna have little buttons made. And that we and everyone who <laughs> completes it gets a little button. And it'll say that's something so along the lines of "I completed stash dash with the knit girls." Two thousand eleven, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. But the only way that you get it is if you participate and, and you complete finish. it. Yep. So. And you can start at any time if you decide that July first you want to start and you can get through those five thousand yards in one month. Go for it. it. Just have to be done by August fifteenth. And like I said, we'll start the thread in the Ravelry group so at some point. It's really cool. I like the theme. I like having it along that theme. It'll be fun. And if you add more yarn to your stash, go for it. We don't care. Yeah, we're not if you don't have, 
5,000 yards and you need to purchase some to get to that, go for it. Also, if you don't have 5,000 yards, I envy you so much. <laughs> I don't, I probably have 5,000 yards in a drawer in here. So, um, okay. So, Stash Dash 5K, Summer 2011 uh, with the Knit Girls. We hope that you guys decide to participate. It's going to be lots of fun. Laura is ridiculously wait. excited about it. Um, I purchased some yarn. I don't have it uh, yet. I just ordered it yesterday. Speaking of using yarn up. Mm -hmm. And this is all going to count. Uh, probably, unless yep. I start it before, which I probably won't have to swap. Oh, before. UFOs, when you said starting before. If you finish a UFO, mm -hmm. take that off there, too. So if you have something lingering and you want it to count, don't finish it until May 27th. <laughs> And then that, everything that you knit, like if it's a... Like my pie shawl. Yeah. If I decide to finish my pie shawl, thousand yards. Done. Yeah. So. I think you should get that just for finishing an object. <laughs> it's like, we, we welcome the cheaters. <laughs> come cheaters, come with us. <laughs> we know you. We are your we kind. We are you. <laughs> so I, I talked before about this pattern by Jesh, and it's called Lead Light, and it's a color work cardigan, and it's steeped. And I was going to use Volmaz for the, um, the colors, but the more I thought about it, I'd have to machine sew the steaks, and I'm not ready for that. So what I, what I did was Laura was like, stop being an idiot and just order some nitpicks. So I did. I ordered some nitpicks palette because it's 100% <laughs> I might have said wool. it just like <laughs> yeah. that, too. So I, it, it's um, pure animal fiber, and it's not super washed. So I can just crochet the steaks, and they'll stay. Um, so I ordered uh, dark charcoal gray for the base and then like six different colors for the accents. I only need three so I'm just going to do some swatches and see what I like best. Hopefully I'll have swatches for you in a couple of weeks because this is going to be my owl project for Harry Potter um, knit along and it's going to, I think it's Transfiguration is the one where you have to do a steeped object. But it's going to be my big summer project. I'm really looking forward to it. Once I have swatches I'll show y'all and maybe you can vote or something on what you like the best. That'll be fun. And it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very You're much. You're not my mother. <laughs> no, I'm not mother's your mother. Um, and happy Mother's Day to everyone else out yes, there. All of our viewers, uh, we, we want to just say Happy Mother's Day. We really appreciate you guys. Um, and if we could buy you all a present, we would. But, but Kobe made you a present. Kobe did make me a present, <laughs> and he is too funny. So at school, every year they do a little, the teachers, you know, he's still in grade school, so the teachers help the kids make a Mother's Day present. It's very sweet of them. So mine came wrapped in handmade wrapping paper. I didn't. It's downstairs. I didn't bring that up. But I also had a. I don't know what these are called. A cross stitch. Oh uh, yeah, cross stitch. Okay. Down. So he made me a poem with the words, the letters for mother. So I'm magic. I'm odd. <laughs> I'm talented. I'm happy. I'm eager, and I'm rocking. <laughs> so this is love, Kobe. He's my junior. Awesome. Uh, so this is very sweet. And then <laughs> he made me this tile. So the teachers all gave them blank white tiles and markers and stuff and said, go for it. Just make something that will make Mama happy. So he did. <laughs> and it says Mom Rocks, right? And it's got little hearts with legs and they're dancing hearts. And then up here, it's raining hearts. This is rain and then there's hearts falling. Yeah, my little man, he loves his mama. And that makes me happy. <laughs> So, it's so cute. I'll have to put it in a frame or something. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But he's just, he's too funny. And he just loves seeing me smile. So it's nice to, you know, to have a little man. I hope he stays little at least a couple of years longer. Um, but that was my Mother's Day gift. It's so funny. It made me happy. It's so cute. I love that they're dancing hard. <laughs> it's raining hard. Like yeah. Aww. He's so funny. We are going to Kentucky. We are. We are, it's... Kentucky Fiber Fest, and it is May what? 19th through the 21st, I believe, that weekend. Mm -hmm. And we will be there Saturday. We are leaving here at 4 a.m. It's the only way that I could go because I have a Foo Fighters concert you the have a night date with before. your husband. Yeah. Well, not my husband, but yeah. It might <laughs> as well be. One day it'll be my husband when I stop being lazy and plan a wedding. But um, yeah, so I have a Foo Fighters concert that Friday before, so I couldn't leave that night. And I was like, will you ask your mama if it's so late on this Saturday? I was referring please? to Dave Grohl as your husband, by the way. Oh, Dave Grohl. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're leaving. The Lindemans are right making early. some very, very big sacrifices to leave really early in the morning for me. And that's because I love them so much. So we'll be on the road. We will be at the Kentucky Fiber Festival outside of, I think it's Louisville. I, haven't even, I don't even know where it is. Oh, because I didn't even bother looking because I didn't think I'd be able to go. 
So we'll be there, and it'll be exciting. And we'll we're staying in that area Saturday night. Some or heading back and getting halfway and staying that night. So in a hotel somewhere. So it'll be super fun. We hope to see y'all there. We're going to try to get a meetup scheduled and we'll tell you more details about that. Maybe next week. Next week. Um, speaking of cool, fun, awesome things, I've been playing with the chat feature on the Ravelry group. Yeah, she's very sneaky room. about it though. She'll be like, I'm going to be a chat in five minutes and I'll only be there for 15. <laughs> Meet you there, you know. Usually it's an hour or so. So if I, I like the short term jets. If you haven't friended us on Plark, that's probably what you should do if you want to know when we're going to be doing. I also put it in the Ravelry group. Well, yeah, um, but I think that a lot of our spur of the moment stuff that we decide to do, we announce on Plark. That's true. So if you haven't, um, you don't call me less on Plark, and you're Lala, Lala Nets on Plark. But we are going to do a movie night this Friday, mm -hmm. and we'll decide the movie at a later date. But basically, everyone, you know, gets that movie. You, we watch it at the same time, and we just chat in the chat room. Yeah. And it's going to be lots of fun. It's like Mystery Science Theater 3000 <laughs> via chat box. So. And I love the chat box feature. It's like old school AOL I am. It's so much fun to yeah. me. So, um... We'll announce it. It'll probably some, be something kitschy in the 80s, like Labyrinth or Goonies or something like that. Princess Bride, perhaps. Maybe we should just, people should nominate. Okay. Thing. So in the episode 58 thread, if you want to participate in the Friday night movie, a thon, then just nominate a movie. And we'll, we'll go from there. It would be pretty cool if it was one of the ones you could stream off of Netflix. I think people, more people will be That's able true. to participate That's that way. That's the way I tend to watch things is Netflix Instant. So if you have Netflix Instant... We could try to pick something off of there so people. This was my Mother's Day present. I'm sorry. This was my Christmas present from Kobe. <laughs> it's got an L. That's super sweet. The Santa's workshop. Santa's workshop. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. It, it probably cost a buck to make, and then they charge you like seven. So <laughs> whatever. It's the way the school makes money. Yep. I'm fine with that. That's okay. Fun. Anything else today? Um. No. God, we're at 47 minutes. That's awesome. Uh, no, you can find us on Plark, Ravelry, Ravelry, Facebook, and Facebook has changed the way they're doing groups, so I have to create a new one, and I don't really know how that works. I'll get with y'all later on that. So if you're a member of the Facebook group, you might have to join a different one soon. I gotta get with Facebook and find out. Twitter. Twitter. Uh, iTunes, if you haven't already left a review and you have the desire and time to do so, please do so not only for us, but for all of your podcasters. I need to just record that and push a play button. <laughs> uh, we could totally do that on my iPhone. <laughs> uh, and I think that's it. And we want to thank everybody who's a member of our group. We have such a good time in that group, and we really love all the participation from you guys. So. And we love y'all, so have a great day. And we'll see you again next week. <laughs> Bye, y'all.